We're gonna take you on a little tour of the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. Cody, Wyoming, and I'm going to take you on a little tour of the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. Something to know if you ever come here to the Cody Firearms Museum is that they will let you in with a camera. However, they will not let you in with uh, a tripod or monopod unless you have some sort of specific permission. Um, I was offered the opportunity to film with my regular camera and tripod and lights, but if you do that, then they send somebody with you. And I just kind of wanted to browse. It's our anniversary, so I didn't want to make a big production out of this. Sorry about the glare. There's a lot of glass in here and with the lighting, there's just no way to prevent it. A lot of you that know anything about guns know about Bob Munden. Bob Munden was the fastest revolver shooter that ever lived. And the cool thing is that he lived about an hour from us. He lived in Butte, Montana. And the Cody Firearms Museum has a wonderful display honoring him. and his wife, Becky. Summer's huge. In the movie, Winchester 73, um, the stunt shooting was done with this Winchester Model 71, which actually was made from the 1930s to the 1950s in 348 Winchester. Um, I think there's a story down here. Herb Parsons was a shooter. Hey, you know what's cool about that guy? Hmm. His name was Clayton. The original Lone Ranger was Clayton Moore. Hmm. I don't know, I just happened to think the guy's name Clayton Moore kind of cool. If at any point you want to read the labels on some of these, you're just going to have to pause the video because I'm not going to stand here for five minutes for you to read. Sorry for the background noise, there's a video going on. This is the Glock Museum. 
block section museum. And for my buddy from New Mexico, who's a big fan of the Longmire series, here's the guns of Longmire. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the Glocks because I'm not a law enforcement officer, I'm not in the military. I know they're reliable, but to me they all look like black bricks. Sorry Glock guys. This is a two-shot repeating muzzle loader, but it would appear that the both loads are in line in the same barrel. That's crazy. Bench rest shooting has been around for a long, long time. Here are some muzzle loading rifles that were used for bench rest shooting um, way, way back in the mid 1800s. 32 pounds. The one on the end? Yeah. There's a 32 pound. They have things organized in this museum in really, really convenient fashions. You can look at individual collections of guns by manufacturer, or in this area of the museum, you can see, you can look at them by time period. So you can see kind of the timeline uh, in the evolution of firearms design. It started in 1892, and they actually had their own um, firearms museum. And it then they the gifted them to these they guys. One of my favorite lever actions of all time, and I haven't actually even gotten to shoot it yet, is the Bullard. Bullard, I've been able to hold one, and I've been able to operate the action, and it was uh, a dream, I guess you could say. I've never felt anything so smooth in my life, and it felt really strong at the same time. Right here. They only made them for a short time. They didn't make very many of them. Very high quality. You loaded, loaded them shotgun style underneath. Um, you opened the lever and then loaded into the magazine tube and then when you closed the lever, um, the follower fell down. His guns were expensive and they took special ammo. It's a Winchester, a bunch of Winchesters, Whitney Kennedys, another Bullard. There's a whole bunch of military arms in this cabinet and I think this one's called Recent Refinements. You're going to see a lot of innovation in this cabinet.
Right, right. Cool. So this whole room is dedicated to Theodore Roosevelt, President Theodore Roosevelt. And here are some of his guns. This is an 1895 Winchester and 405 Winchester. It's a famous rifle. currently reading the book Hunting Trips of a Ranch Man by Theodore Roosevelt and it is fantastic. He was a very, very good writer. He wrote lots of books. Kiapa Firearms currently makes a pretty good reproduction of this Spencer. Um, theirs is chambered in 40, well, I think they also they have it in 5650, but they also have it in 45 long cold. Um, but it, I've shot it. It's a nice gun. It's probably one of the best Spencer replicas that you can get at this point in time. This is the Remington Arms, uh, one of the displays for Remington Arms, and I actually have one of these guns. It would be this middle one right there, four up from the bottom. It's a Remington Matchmaster Model 513T. It's a target rifle. Mine does not have the front sight on it, nor the peep. Uh, it has a U-Nurdle. 20 power fixed scope, which is probably worth more than the rifle, actually. Uh, mine was made in January of 1952. And now we're at probably one of Cody's favorite. She likes little pistols. It's interesting, a Remington nylon pistol. Those of you that are in my family know that I'm kind of partial to Savage Firearms. And part of that is because of firearms that my grandfather had. Um, my father has, which was passed down to him by his grandfather, um, a Savage Model 25, Pump Action 22. It was only made for about four years in the later end of the 20s. And 
my grandfather had, and my grandma still has it, a Savage Model 99 and 300 Savage. And there's several examples of the Savage 99 here. The Savage 99 is unique in, because it, in the age of lever guns, it was one of the first lever gun that could shoot pointed Spitzer ammo. Um, with You could load it safely, I should say, um, because it has a rotary magazine. You'll also notice it doesn't have a hammer, an external hammer. But they made it in quite a few different calibers. Uh, 300 Savage is one of the most popular back then. Some bolt guns, pistols. Savage, I think you need to start making pistols again. Be awesome. Here's some Burgess shotguns. Burgess rifle. Oakley and her shotgun. Now, you, this is a case of Ballard's, but one of the things I just talked about was a unertal scope. Right. Adjustable objective. You can't talk about lever guns without talking about Marlin. Marlin's been making a lot of really cool guns over the years, but they're probably most famous for their lever action firearms. Now, I would prefer one of these older ones with the closed bolt that's not exposed. It doesn't make any difference in performance. I just like the look of the flat sides better. Um, you'll also notice that the new Henrys, while good rifles, they're based on the Marlin action. an air rifle. Cody likes Derringers. <laughs> you know, 
I think Cimarron might make some of these. I don't know. If they do, I can get you one with a little knife. Those are cool. Cimarron is about to come out with a really handy one that you're going to love. Take some modern cartridge too. Smith & Wesson repeating rifle. I started shooting um, 
at a very young age with air rifles. And then when I got a little bit older, about eight years old, and joined a program called 4-H, I was in the 4-H shooting sports project and shot a lot of air rifle. And an interesting part of American history, especially Western history, uh, has to do with the Lewis and Clark expedition. And one of the things about Lewis and Clark that uh, actually intimidated a lot of the native people as they were um, making their journey was the fact that one of them had a gun that was capable of multiple shots, a repeating rifle of sorts that they'd never seen before. And it's debated whether Lewis and Clark, I think it was Lewis, had a Ghirardoni, I think that's how you spell it, Ghirand, Ghirandoni, repeating air rifle, or a Lucan's air rifle. Most people will say that it was the Ghirandoni. There's a lower level, they call it the firearm study. Kind of cool going into the basement of the museum. So the basement in the Cody Firearms Museum is awesome. There's an amazing collection down here. There's a whole collection devoted to John Browning and you'll see all of these sweet gun cabinets. These pull out and you can look through both sides of them so these would be drilling rifles I had to switch batteries because my GoPro battery I already went through uh, down here in the Cody Firearms Museum basement so I want to show you something here they have all these guns stored down here in cabinets that you can actually look at. Got some descriptions on them. And uh, drawers also, most of these have pistols in them or revolvers. you get the chance to come to the Buffalo Bill Cody Museum, especially the Firearms Museum, be sure to come downstairs. There's an elevator right by the entrance to the main area, 
of the museum upstairs, so you're definitely going to want to check it out. shooters in world history and one of the guns he used to shoot was a Winchester model 61 22 and my mom has that gun if you have a Winchester model 61 22 just know that it is climbing in value they're worth quite a bit of money now
If you've made it this far through the video, I am very grateful that you would take the time to watch all of this. I know that the video has probably been pretty tedious to watch, and it is very long. I know the glare on the glass is inconvenient, and the clicking sounds that come from the microphone of my camera, because I had to do everything by hand with my GoPro, uh, were a little bit annoying. But I really wanted to get this video done as a virtual tour of the museum laid out the way it is now because the Cody Firearms Museum is about to change layouts and it won't look this way anymore. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I will say that if you do go to the Buffalo Bill Center of the West, make sure to give yourself enough time to go to the other four museums. The Buffalo Bill Museum, the Draper Natural History Museum, the Whitney Western Art Museum, and this, the Plains Indian Museum. You will not find a more educational experience about Western culture anywhere in the United States of America. Thank you for coming along, and I'll see you somewhere down the road.